What's up everyone, Ben here. Today we're going to be doing a design project to create one of these no cell phone icons. And the reason that we're going to be doing this is just because it's a great way to learn or review a lot of the skills that are involved in icon design. And we're going to be using Affinity Designer on the iPad today. This is the best vector editor on iPad currently. And it does a lot of the same things that Adobe Illustrator does on the desktop. So it's a great way to be able to work on the go. And this project will just help us to learn a lot of the little skills that are involved in doing icon design on the iPad or on the desktop as well. You can do similar things with Affinity Designer or Illustrator on your desktop. But we're going to be focused on the iPad today. But feel free to follow along in whatever application you want to work in. Okay, so first I'm just going back out of here and we're going to go ahead and make a new project by pressing the plus button in the top right and choosing a new document. I'm just going to go ahead and switch my dimensions here to be 1000 by 1000. If you tap on a numbered circle in a Fane Designer, you will always get this calculator and you can just put in what you want. So I'm just going to do 1000 by 1000 and you want to make sure that you hit the create artboard button so that that is blue. If that's not blue, then you won't get an artboard. Then go ahead and hit OK. We can zoom in and out with pinch gesture. So zoom it out a little bit and there we can see our whole artboard. And you should always sketch before you start designing in the digital program. Um, I really suggest that you always sketch on paper and with paper and pencil. And then you can really get your ideas out. I've already sketched this icon and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making it now. First thing we're going to need is a rectangle. The basic shape of a phone is a rounded rectangle. So the rectangle is kind of at the bottom of your tools on the left. I'm going to tap on that rectangle tool. And then I'm just going to drag one out here about the appropriate dimensions for a phone. I'm going to be modeling my phone on an iPhone. You can model your phone on whatever phone you like or whatever phone you have in front of you. I use an iPhone 11 Pro and so that's what I'm going to be modeling on today. Okay, so we have our rectangle here and I'm going to go ahead and change the corner type in my toolbar down at the bottom of the screen to rounded. And then I get a little red handle in the top left corner that will allow me to adjust the roundness of my corner. So I want to go out to kind of an appropriate amount of roundness there for what an iPhone is going to look like. An interesting thing about Apple is almost all of their products are rounded rectangles of one kind or another um, because the rounded rectangle is a very pleasing shape to the eye. I have snapping turned on in the bottom left corner. I have the magnet with the blue circle around it. And so I'm just going to position this in the center of my screen just to let me kind of work on it here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this rectangle by tapping on my menu button, which is the three dots top left and choosing duplicate. If we open up our layers panel on the right, we can see that we now have two rounded rectangles, one on top of the other. I'm going to go ahead and go to my color studio, which is the colored dot top right corner. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to a pure white. Now it's kind of a gray. So I'm going to just tap white in my quick colors. And now I have a white rectangle on top of a gray rectangle. Now we're going to shrink this down. We're going to do that by grabbing our top left corner, holding down three fingers on our screen, because then you can see it's going to scale in proportion and towards the center, which is what we want. We want it to just stay right on the center of this here. So we're going to go ahead and scale that down when we let go. When we let go, we want to let go with our scaling hand first. Okay, now that we have our two screens, we have something that's starting to look like a cell phone because cell phones are really just rounded rectangle, one on top of the other. But let's go ahead and I'm going to, in my layers studio, I'm going to select my back rectangle and I'm going to change its color in the color studio to black. All right, now we have it as black, white on black, which is perfect. That's how lots of phones look. Now I'm going to go ahead and with my move tool selected, which is the top tool in the toolbar, I'm going to go ahead, drag over both of these. In Affinity Designer, you want to drag over the entire object to select it. I'm going to zoom out a little, holding down two fingers on the screen. I'm then going to grab that shape with my other hand 
and move it off the artboard. This is just the process of iteration so that we can always get back to old versions if we need to. It's a really important design process to follow is to keep your past iterations so that you can get back to them if needed. The next thing that we need to do is actually to create the notch at the top of this screen. So some phones have notches, some phones have hole punches, some phones don't have a face scanner at all, but the iPhone 11 has a notch. So we're going to go ahead and make that. And so we're just going to duplicate this second rectangle again. So holding down two fingers on the screen, so we can drag to duplicate that. And I'm going to go ahead and change its color to black. And then I'm just going to scale it here and give it a little notch using the snapping to kind of line it up there. Zoom in, see how that looks. That is looking pretty good. Then we can select that rectangle. Holding down one finger on the screen will allow us to select multiple items. So I'm going to select the white rectangle. And then from my menu, three dots in top left, I am then going to choose under geometry, subtract. And that gives me now this new shape, which I am going to duplicate just that shape. Two fingers on the screen, pull it up. Duplicate that right there so that I have that shape saved if I need it later. All right, the next thing that we want to do is just fix these corners in here because these corners are sharp and there are no sharp corners in an Apple product. And so that doesn't look very good. And even though this might be a small sign, we want it to look, you know, as good as it possibly can. So selecting that shape, we'll then choose the corner tool, which is the fourth tool down on the left. Select that corner tool, and this will allow us to adjust the roundness of individual corners. I'm going to select this corner right here, and then I'm just going to tap and drag. And you can see at the bottom that it's showing us what the radius is going to be. I want to go for three, so we're just going to drag that out. Oop, too much. If you get too much, you can always tap the radius down here and just choose what you want. So I'm going to go for three. I'm going to tap this other one. I'm going to set it to three as well. Now if we tap off, we can kind of see what that looks like. That's not looking as round as I want it to, so I think we'll go back, grab the corner tool, select that first corner, hold down one finger on the screen and select the other corner, and now we can adjust them together. It did some automatic adjustment for us. We don't want that much. We really want to be more like probably a seven or an eight here. Now let's tap off. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Zoom out here, look at our icon. Okay, let's go ahead and select all of that again because remember we are iterating, so we're just going to hold down two fingers on the screen and duplicate that off artboard. If you watch very much of my videos, you will see that I do this duplicating thing all the time because I always want to have iterations to go back to. Some people want to delete whatever they don't like then they'll just delete old versions or they'll be like well I'm not ever going to use that again and then they don't have that later if they need it so it's always better to have it than to not have it okay the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the home line at the bottom of the screen so go ahead and grab the pen tool from kind of the middle of the tool set there and this pen tool works like it does in most vector applications so if you've used it in Illustrator or Inkscape, you will be familiar with how the pen tool works, but pen tools can be confusing to people when they first start out. I do have a video here on YouTube all about how to use the pen tool, so you can check that out if you need to. We're just going to lay down a point down here and then hold down one finger on the screen, which will keep our line straight, and then lay down a point over here. Then we want to go ahead and we want to set our color in the color studio, and we want to select the stroke because the pen tool just creates a line. So tap on the stroke, which is the black line, and then choose gray. Then we can increase the size of our stroke on that stroke studio just below the color studio, the little line. We're just going to drag up with our finger on that, and that's going to increase our stroke. We want to go ahead and then tap on that stroke panel and choose advanced. Then we want to make sure that our cap is round. Ours is right now. So that's perfect, that's what we're looking for. There's a lot you can control with the stroke panel, but we just wanna make sure it's round at this point. Then selecting our move tool again, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this is in the center of our screen. We can tap off, zoom out, and see how that looks. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is create the no symbol around this. And to do that, we're going to need an ellipse. So let's go back to our rectangle tool, but we're just going to tap on it a second time and then we'll get all of our shape options. So choosing the ellipse, we're gonna start here from kind of the center of the rectangle and drag out and we'll hold down the three fingers on the screen to get the perfect circle and to go from the center. We just wanna kind of cover up the shape there. Perfect. Now, these are not the colors we want, so let's go to the color studio. And on the fill, we're just going to swipe up and that will get rid of the fill entirely. Then selecting the stroke, we wanna change the color. So we'll go to swatches at the bottom and choose red. Then let's increase our stroke here. I'm just swiping up on the stroke. We want to get a nice thick line. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is draw a line across. So grabbing our pen tool, come here and about halfway between the points, a little bit more towards the upper point, I think. Drop our point there, and then we'll go down and do about the same thing in the bottom right of our circle. So now we have the crossing line. We want to go ahead then and holding down one finger on the screen, select both of these shapes and we want to make them come together as one shape. So we'll go to our menu and the first thing we need to do is expand our stroke. Now we have them as shapes and then we'll select the menu again and then we'll just choose add under geometry. And that will go ahead and that will make this a real shape. Now we can reposition it to make sure that it is exactly in the center and we have our phone icon behind. And so now we can select all of these and we can make a new group just to keep them all together. Now we're free to do whatever we want with this shape and we can put it on a sign, let people know this is a no cell phone use area, uh, put it up at dinner to let people know that they're not allowed to use their cell phone while we're all eating together, whatever you want to do with it. But hopefully you found this video helpful in learning just a little bit more about how to use Affinity Designer on the iPad in a real project. Remember, I have a full set of videos on how to use Affinity Designer on the iPad, each tool that's in the toolbar over on the left. And so you can check those videos out in this playlist. I also have full courses on how to do specific projects in Affinity Designer on Skillshare. So go ahead and check those out in the description of this video. And I will see you next time.